Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and I'm building an old town hall for the bottom of High Street on my N-Gage model railway. It took a lot of thought to get the roof right, so in this video I'll show you how I approached the roof of this irregularly shaped building with its cylindrical corner tower. Let's get on with it then and look at Town Hall Roof. Because the real thing in Sorby Bridge is only half in existence, and because I've built the Chandwell version at a much tighter angle than the real thing, I didn't really have much to go on when it came to designing the roof. My first idea was to fold two rectangular hipped roofs into each other like this. This led to an unusual valley and a piece of roof draining rainwater directly into the tower. A roof with each part the same depth around the four walls was better, but its irregular shape made all the faces look unusual and none of the angles consistent with each other. Eventually the right approach came to me and I will explain that now. I used the free software Inkscape to do my drawing, but this is not an Inkscape tutorial. It's rather a look at my thought process when designing the roof. Starting with the plan view of the building, I added guidelines. These helped me determine the centre line of the building from the back corner through the centre of the tower. I could then flip this horizontally to give me a symmetrical triangle at the back of the building. So that the front faces meet at the tower side, I drew a rectangle that meets the intersection of the centre line and the tower. A rectangle at the back wall intersects the front one at the point that it crosses the guideline. I trimmed off the excess parts of rectangle and cut away the circle for the tower. I duplicated, flipped and rotated them both so that they fit in on the other side of the building. It was then just a simple case of drawing the shape to fill in the flat part of the roof. Because each half of the roof is identical, I was left with just two unique shapes. These represent the plan view of the roof, that is, looking straight down on it. The next step is to look at the elevation view of the roof, that is, looking straight forward onto it. I decided to make the roof the same height as the roof on the Earl Chandfield Hotel. That happens to be 19.72 millimetres. I simply took the plan view shapes and squashed them to that height. This left me with two shapes the same height as each other. Notice that the curve in the one on the right looks a bit squashed. That's fine. Now we need to get them the right size to build with. I measured the length of this diagonal, 31.38 millimetres. And then I stretched the other part to the same height. I repeat for the other side. This diagonal is 45.99 millimetres. So I stretch this part to 45.99 millimetres high. I can duplicate them now and flip the one with the tower cut out. The flat bit is just the same as I've drawn already. It's already correct in plan view. The curved parts look strange, but I had confidence that the technique would work. You can simply chop off a bit of the end of the elevation drawing to make the triangular supports which will hold the roof faces at the correct angle. I arranged them and printed them to a sticky label and set about building the roof. I use cereal packets for my roofs as the exact thickness of the card is not important and it's abundant and cheap. Weetabix box is the best, it's very thin and very sturdy. Thinner is better when you're working with exact angles like in this roof. The printed face of cereal packets is quite shiny and PVA glue does not stick to it very well. The back is bare card and does not present that problem. Therefore, it's important to stick the sticky label to the shiny side. This makes it much easier to get a quick and solid bond when gluing the roof together later on. The sticky label just sticks straight to the packet and I set about cutting it with my knife. I use a standard craft knife for the big simple cuts. The blades for this knife are much cheaper than those for my scalpel and I don't need fine control for these big cuts. The scalpel does come out though when I need to cut the curved parts. I'm eventually left with a kit of parts ready to assemble. A simple line of PVA along one of the supports allows the support to bond instantly to the raw card on the underneath of the roof face. As soon as all four are done, they can be turned the right way up and we have the four faces of our roof. It's then very simply a case of adding a line of PVA down one edge and butting the pieces together. 
I was left with two L-shaped pieces of roof, another bead of PVA, and the two pieces can be butted together. The top fits straight on top of the supports and drops exactly in place. From this angle, the curved bit looks very strange, but because I simply stretched the pieces from their plan view, together they make a perfect circle when looked at directly from above. I reprinted the parts with guidelines. The back two faces are slightly taller to give a bit of an overhang for the gutter. I used the guidelines to help me align strips of scale scenes roof tiles. These are meticulously added, one overlapping the previous, one strip at a time. The overhanging tiles are left until the glue has set, and then they are trimmed with a scalpel, before being glued into place. Thankfully, it fits around the tower almost perfectly. The skylight windows are printed and stuck to waste food acetate, sliced with the scalpel, and then the label is peeled away to leave the glazing. I use watercolour paint to make the frames a wooden colour, and then stick them to the back of the roof face. I use a Sharpie permanent marker to colour the backs of the window black. This makes them look like the room behind is in darkness. Simple PVA glue is then used to mount the tiled face onto the base. The holes in the base are large enough to prevent the acetate backing from making the roof wavy and uneven. To finish, I printed a screenshot of a real flat roof and dropped that on top of a slice of card to represent a slight ridge. And then I used scale scenes ridging tiles to tidy up all the edges. So this is what I'm left with. The roof looks lovely from face on. And it looks symmetrical from this angle, with the tower at the front. These end pieces are regularly shaped, and the overall look seems to work. This face at scale 3.6 metres is not as deep as this face at 6.1 metres. But that's not too far off what the real one in Sorby Bridge looks like. That has a front face which meets the tower at the original apex of its two fronts, and a rear face which is deeper than its front one. I think it looks great. So the town hall is nearly finished. In my next video I will show the completion. I'll show the chimneys and the dormer windows, the parapets, spouts, gutters and some finishing detail. We may even be lucky enough to hear some of the background of the building if I can convince Chandwell historian Silas Bickerdyke to come out of retirement to record a spot. Here's a look at my no maths, no computer hipped roofs technique. Please do press the thumbs up button if you found this video interesting. Until next time then, thank you for watching, take care and I'll see you soon.